Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you five simple effects you can use in After Effects for your sniper. So these are just default effects built in After Effects, there's no plugins used for this. So it's very simple, these are all basic ones that you can use when your guy is scoping in and sniping like that. Now unfortunately I've already recorded this and it turned out my webcam was in a terrible position, I literally had it blocking just like the bottom over here, but it happened to be the timeline and even though I was explaining it, it covered up some things so I'm here to redo it again. So I'm going to show you all five effects and if you look down in the timestamps or the timeline you'll be able to skip to when I'm doing those effects. But first of all I am going to add a camera shake to all of them so make sure you watch the first bit and then you can skip to the effect you are looking for. So let me show you them all first. The first one is very simple. It is just like a light blur effect but I'll, I'll play it here. It's very simple. Effect 2 looks like this. Effect three, no, not that. Effect three looks like this. Effect four, and effect five. So as you can see, they're all very subtle, simple effects. I like to keep my effects clean and professional looking. And basically you could take these and turn them up a notch or amp up some of the numbers to make them look crazier. And I mean, with your color correction and everything, that's how it goes. So like I said, we're going to do a basic camera shake on all of them. They all had a camera shake. We're going to do that first here. But first, let's watch the entire clip just so you get a feel for it. I would only really do these effects on the final kill. So there's two guys left. I snipe one, snipe the other. But the second kill would be where the, I mean, the big spot in the music is and I have more of these effects going off. Boom, I had to cut it early because we were yelling after that. So <laughs> that's the effect. And now I'm gonna do the default camera shake, which is going to be applied to all of them. So follow this along. We have our effect here. I have a marker on where the shot is. I'm gonna click S to bring up my scale. Hitting page up will go one frame back. I'm going to click a keyframe on my scale so it is 100%. Page down will go one frame forward, which is where the shot is. So I'm gonna do this pretty fast. I'm gonna go 116. As you can see, it scales it up there. And I'm gonna hold shift page down, which should move 10 frames at a time. I'm gonna do it three times. So I move 30 frames and change the keyframe or the value back to 100. So now if I zoom out, you can see, now that my webcam is blocking it, I have these three keyframes. Select them all and press page, or F9. Once I press F9, it's created an easy ease on them. We're gonna click our graph tool while still selecting the keyframes. And you can see it here, and my whole goal is I want it to do most of its scaling at the first half here. So I'm gonna grab this keyframe and grab this handle and move it over, and grab the second handle and move it in. You can see most of the scaling or most of the action will be done at the beginning and it's gonna taper off. So it looks like this. It's very subtle, but we need it to scale in so that we can add the camera shake or the wiggle and it will hide it. So under effects here, I'm going to type in wiggle and I'm going to grab wiggle position and wiggle rotation and place it on here. So I have um, my wiggle position and wiggle rotation and we're going to hide just both of the transform ones so we can see just the position rotation in these numbers here. Again, the frame before the snipe, I'm gonna change all these values to zero. So speed zero, amount zero on both wheel and rotation. Add a keyframe on all four. I'm going to hit page down, go one frame over. And for our position speed, I'm gonna change it to two. And for our position amount, I'm gonna change it to 10. For wiggle rotation, or sorry, for rotation speed, I'm gonna change it to one and amount two. So now we have these keyframes. I'm going to move eight frames over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can really play with it, but I'm gonna go there and change these all back to zero. So zero, 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 zero. And if I press U while selecting a layer, it'll bring up all my keyframes. And you can see, I mean, as it plays real time, it's not too much, but if I go frame by frame, it is doing a slight wiggle. And that is, and that is our starting point, and that's gonna be applied to all of our effects. So the first one was a super easy effect. I just literally used one effect, and if I type in light, then hit space, you are looking for CC Light Burst 2.5. I'm gonna place it on there. Again, a frame before the sniper shot hits. I'm changing the length, the ray length to zero. Keyframe, one frame over, and I'm gonna put it to 35. You can play with it as much as you want. I'm going to move all the way to where, so 30 frames over, which I had 
you know, the same keyframe here before and change it back to zero. Now, if we play it, it looks like this. Super easy, but I mean, it's nice and simple and uh, fast. So number two, let me see number two here. Yeah, I played with a glow. So effect two, again, keeping our wiggle and everything there. We're gonna go layer, new, adjustment layer. We're gonna go the frame exactly where the bullet shoots. We're gonna type in the effect glow. Grab glow, place it on the adjustment layer, and we're gonna bring up the radius so it looks all crazy. And then we're gonna bring down the threshold. Or sorry, bring up the threshold, just a little less crazy. Now what we're gonna do is select our rectangle tool while still selecting the mask or still selecting the adjustment layer. And we're gonna create a mask right at the 50% mark. Make sure you have this wide out because we are going to bring down our mask tools and go to feather and go 55. That way it's just the top half. And now while still selecting the adjustment layer, we're gonna press T to bring up the opacity. One frame before the shot to zero, during the shot 100. And let's go again, the 30 frames. We have the same point there to zero. And we can play with it here, see what it looks like. It's a slight glow. You can really do, I mean, crazier with all this stuff here. Playing with the threshold will make it go nuts, but I'm getting something I visually like, and it, I mean, it goes away pretty fast. Next thing to add to this a little bit more, we're gonna go layer new solid. Make sure it's pure white. We're gonna grab that, bring it to the bottom. Click our regular clip, press T to bring up opacity, one frame before, a keyframe at 100%. During, we're gonna bring it down to just 90. So the whole thing gets a little brighter and let's go all the way 30 frames back to 100. And we can see, I let it render, just a nice little glow, but it feels like it has more of an impact than a regular shot would. So now let's go to effect three and this is gonna be optic compensation. So I'm gonna select my layer and now you could do this on an adjustment layer over top of this clip normally, but because we have the wiggle, it actually throws it off. So I again, need to do it right on the layer. I'm going to type in optic, not optic nation, but optics compensation, place that on there. And let me just hide all these wheel effects because it gets a little messy. And then I'm going to look for 3D glass or glasses. Yeah, 3D glasses and place it on there. It's going to make it go black, but that's fine. Under 3D glass, we're going to see left view. We're going to change that to our Valorant clip and we're done. That's it. And now in 3D view, we're going to click where it says side by side and bring it down to balanced red and blue. And you can see it kind of already has some there. Now make sure in your optic compensation, we're going to click the first box that says reverse, re le reverse lens distortion. So we'll go one frame before. You see everything's fine. And I'm going to click where the FOV is here, a keyframe of zero. And then one frame where it's happening. You can see it's already happening. I believe that's because of my camera shake. But we are going to crank it up a little more. Let's go to like 36 and then I'm just going to move 20 frames over this time and bring it back down to zero. And if I click enter, even then you can't really see it. So I'm going to press U, find my keyframe. Let's bring it to like 55 where it's kind of crazy and let's bring it over to 30 frames so it lasts longer. So really it's about you playing with it and finding what you like. I think that works a little more and like your style could go a lot crazier with that. So effect number four is very simple. I'm just gonna use two effects for this. And I've done this before in my no scope effects before, but I'm, again, it works well with a scoped shot. So I'm gonna type in a warp, just grab warp. It's gonna place on there. Let me hide again, all these wiggle effects because they're everywhere. We're gonna change the type from arc to fisheye or the style, I guess. One frame before, we're gonna change the bend to zero. And during, I'm gonna change it to 35. And then let's press U and bring it all the way to 30 frames and go to zero. Now for this one, we're actually going to not just leave the keyframes like that, we're gonna copy what we did with the scale. So I'm gonna press F9, bring up my graph. And this way I'm gonna make it, force it to warp more at the beginning so it eases and tapers off at the end. You can see it here. It's not bad, but we're just gonna add a bit of blur to that. So all you have to do under effects is type in radio. I'm gonna grab radio blur. We're gonna change the type to zoom, go one frame before. I have to keep looking because my microphone is blocking my keyboard. Change the amount to zero. 
add a keyframe during, let's just say 10, and let's go 30 frames and go back to zero. And you can see, once it renders, not bad looking shot. Now for effect number five, I actually made up on the spot right beforehand because I wanted something a little bit unique for this and just to show you, you can really do anything in After Effects. So uh, my idea was I go layer, once I click the composition, go layer new, solid. It's gonna be white, it's gonna be on the top. I'm gonna hit the eye to hide it for now. Now because this is all shaky, I can't see the center of the screen. So I'm gonna turn on my title safe to see that. While selecting the white layer, I'm going to click the ellipse tool. On the center here, I'm gonna hold down my click and my control and shift to create a perfect circle, which is around there. Keep it around that size You can see it here. Now, while clicking the layer, I'm gonna go control shift and D, which splits it. I'm gonna delete the first half because I don't need this there. Now I'm gonna click M to bring up my mask options or MM and you can see mask expansion. I'm just gonna use 10 frames over and I'm gonna force it to be the whole thing. Now select both these frames, click F9 so we can create an easy ease. Now selecting the mask layer, I'm gonna duplicate it and change the second one to subtract. I'm gonna press U to bring up my keyframes and on the subtract one, I'm gonna bring the last keyframe a little later. So it has an effect looking like this. Now I'm gonna turn off my title safe so I can see properly here. And we're gonna add some effects to this. So first I'm gonna type in gradient and add gradient ramp to it. What I'm gonna do is change the top one to white and the bottom one to like a grayish because then I'm gonna select my layer and change the blending mode. You could have it as like screen and stuff. Oh, that's lighting. But I think it's a little too much so to get it more subtle, I go with overlay. And you can see the more you make it gray, the more it kind of blends in here and the white a little bit more of a glow. So I might even make the gray a little bit more bright. Then we're gonna make sure we turn on motion blur for our layer and turn on motion blur, well, for our composition and for our layer. So it kinda of adds a bit there. Just kinda of adds a little something. If it's too much, you can always tweak it more. I just like the impact. Now we're gonna utilize the fact that this already has camera shake on it. And we're gonna add kinda of like some RGB elements using the camera shake to make it a little blurry. So I'm going to, again, hide all the wiggle effects cause they just take up my whole effects controls panel. In uh, effects and presets, I'm gonna type in shift. No, I didn't hit that button. And under shift, I'm gonna I'm gonna find shift channels and place it on there. Select this layer and duplicate it twice so we have two. Well, so we have three. I mean, I was gonna say two duplicates. Now on the first one, even though I hit the wiggle position, it's back there. That's annoying. We're gonna make sure only the red is active in the top layer. So green, full off, blue, full off. Second layer, we're gonna do the same thing, but make sure the green's only active. So red off, blue off. And on the bottom layer, which is the nice clean one, we're gonna make sure just the blue is on. So red off, blue off, or green off. Select the top two layers, change the blending mode to screen so it looks regular. You can see as it shakes, there actually is some RGB elements to the side there, just because of the wiggle. Now you could apply some of these effects all together, but, and again, these are just like basic clean effects. You can crank up the numbers and make it look crazy, add your color correction and all that. But I think these are great, effects to keep your shots looking clean, professional, and add some impact and dynamicness, I guess, to the shot. So thanks guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.